pumpkins. Hello. Lisa B, the pumpkin lady here. And Jack B, the pumpkin lady's husband, hubby. Hubby. Sure, that'll work. And um, we have one more volunteer. I don't know if we can get us a week. Hi. And baby bear. That's baby bear. Sorry, bear. He's, he's fuzzy. decided he's very fuzzy lovey. And he's in my lap and he will not leave. So he might pop back into the video later or not. I don't know, but I'm going to be coated with white cat hair. And that's okay because everything is coated in cat hair here because, yeah, we have a huge herd of cats, which is why I love cat patterns and cat things. So <laughs> he's like rolling over in my lap. Uh, we have today Hallelujah. 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 Part two. Yeah. Last episode. Oh, my bear. He just ran Real off. Left. Uh, no more bear in the chair. In the last episode, we had Hallelujah Part 1. And thank you again, DMC, for all the lovely stitchy goodness. And I'm still going over everything. It's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of stuff. Uh, some of that, a couple things might actually become giveaways. So we can expand your hallelujah. But today is hallelujah part two. So this is from a lot of different places what we have today. And uh, I thought I'd bring Jack in to <laughs> don't know why. get to play. Because you haven't actually seen um, several of the things here. You haven't seen at all. Nope. Nope. Shopping. But uh, yeah, we have some a whole bunch of good stitchy goodness for you for hallelujah part two. And uh, I'm going to start today with just a really sweet pattern that I found online because I love it because, of course, Halloween because cats. But it's very pretty. It's almost, n I mean, it's Halloween, but not just because it's really soft colors. Oh, I like the colors. Yeah. This is by Willow Hill Samplings. And I really do love samplers. And so samplers are basically alphabets, often. Not always, it could be sayings, could be numbers, you know, pretty quotes. But they would have done a couple of hundred years ago. Usually girls would have been stitching them and it practices their stitching and it practices their letters and numbers and they make beautiful things for the home. And this one is called Autumn Alphabet. I really love it by Willow Hill Samplings. And like I said, it is autumn-y, but it is definitely not Halloween, despite the fact that there's pumpkins and a crow and a moon and a black cat. But look how soft and pretty that is. And I just want you to note the background fabric. The background fabric I am all about. Uh, I'm going to look on here. Oh, murky. I love Berkey. It's a weird colored fabric by Picture This Plus. It's why kind of it's murky. 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 But it just has the most beautiful shadings to it. I might try to dye my own piece of cloth. I don't know. We'll see. Can you I think get that I, at across the station? I think I'd like to. Uh, no, I downloaded this off online. I got this online. Oh, I just on, Yeah, I got this on Etsy. And um, I had sent away because I... Now, here's the thing. Had I known about Cross Stitch Station before I bought these fibers... I would totally go to Cross the Station in Waynesboro, Virginia and get them, which from here on out, that's where I'm going to get most of my fibers from because I had to order from four different Etsy shops to get my fiber and like, I think two other online stores. I could not get them. They were out everywhere. This one takes um, Gentle Art Threads. So, love Gentle Art Threads, but couldn't find them. Everywhere is like out of everything. Of course, had I gone across the station, yeah, she's got like everything. I would have just been able to buy it all in one stop. But I wanted to show you the fibers. These are these soft colors. I love this. There's one here. It's more like, it's kind of like a blue. It's hard to see in the camera light, but I love them for fall colors, but on that murky, it's really, really I beautiful. Like this one. Which one? This one here. Yeah, this like this one's celery, celery green. But um, they're beautiful, and I'm really excited because I hadn't used general art threads before. So now I get a new one to try. But again, that pattern is by Willow Hill Samplings called Autumn Alphabet. It's beautiful. Really, really, really pretty. So new favorite of mine. I 
here's something to talk about. Why don't you stop it? <laughs> You're creeping me out. Um, so it's hard to find trims a lot of times, especially if you're like we are, like we're just like out in the middle of nowhere. And sometimes I can get to Walmart and that might be the only thing I have. But no matter where you go to buy trims, it can be kind of expensive, especially if you use a lot of it. And I have found that for doing a lot of finishes for cross stitch and for punch needle and especially like little ornaments, I love pom pom trim. It's wonderful. This is really great to just go really quickly around one of your ornaments. Jack, could you grab me one of my ornaments over there, like the cat on top or any of them? Could you yep. grab an ornament for me? So I'm going to show you how I use it, one of the ways in which I use it. But so here's simple pom pom trim, and that's white. So I will just put it. This is perfect. This was by a uh, pattern by Doreen Jones in the fall, just cross stitch issue. But um, it's great. You use extra, attach it on. It's great to hang as an ornament. And it's beautiful. And I love it. However, here's something I don't love. This little roll of thread, okay, of that thread, of trim, three yards. Three eighths of an inch wide, three yards of trim. Five bucks. Granted, I can do a lot of little tiny ornaments with that, but you do need larger pieces. This goes really quickly. And especially if you want to use it in a lot of different colors, because it does come in like a mazillion different colors. Q AliExpress. What is it? Alibaba? I the website, know. Alibaba. I am trying to take a look on here. So I went on there. Hmm. I'm even looking it up for you really quickly just to make sure that I have the right one. I was shopping on Amazon, I was trying Walmart, I was trying Michaels and Joann's and all of these different websites and then going in person to stores and I have bought a lot of them. Alibaba, there we go. Alibaba.com, it's kind of like Amazon. However, this deals with uh, more of the Asian companies. So you can go directly to the source of a lot of these manufacturers. Mm -hmm. So for $11, and maybe, I think it was like only $3 to ship, and I don't know how that works, but it was from China. Do you see this? 50 yards of pom-pom trim. 50 yards. 50 for maybe $14 total. I mean, that included the shipping cost of tax. 50 yards compared to for what, $14, compared to three yards for $5. Stitchers, we getting ripped off. That's all I'm saying. I do love these, I love all the colors, but I gotta tell you, it just took a little bit longer to get, maybe about two weeks, completely worth it for the savings, because 50 yards for the price of three of these. So I get 50 yards instead of nine yards. Does this get... Do you have different colors of this or something? They have a rainbow of colors. Oh, rainbows. And I, I want them. Well, I guess for me, the this one here, if you had to do a quick it's project. Perfect. It's great. And you needed something to go small, to like a Jones fast, or Michaels or something right. that'd be there. Last minute gift and you needed something quickly. But stocking your art room, that would be the way to go. But if you've got some room to stock, I mean, I am telling you. And Is here, it the same wait. thing? Um, basically, so here's the only difference between them. A little bit more separation mm -hmm. on the one on the roll. Uh, and and then this one, these are a little bit closer together, pom poms. That wouldn't Both. make any difference. No difference in your work. Perfectly fine. And that was just from one of the companies that I bought from. Another company might be a little bit, you know, they might be spaced the pom poms a little bit differently, just like that is. Different companies will have their own ways. But they have a rainbow of colors on there, a lot of different companies, and you are getting it straight from the manufacturers in China. So. 50 yards for what I would pay for nine yards. Mm -hmm. Three of these. We're getting ripped off. <laughs> if you have some time to plan for your projects, like I really need to get this in orange and black and maybe some, okay. I just want all the colors. Let's just stop. I, I mean, I know I want things for fall, but I just want all the colors. But economically speaking, this is way better and I have already I mean I go through a ton of white so I've already more than paid for this several times over yeah so Alibaba just search for pom-pom trim mm -hmm. and there you go and 
we have a new blog on our website at pumpkinlady.com. Lisa B. Blog. Lisa Blog. And when I do these videos, we're going to be putting more details on there about where you can find things, how I might have finished something or used a product or whatever the case may be. This is just, just our chance to discuss more, have more photos. You can take up close looks at everything, take a little bit longer to look at something, and then you tell you how I got it and you can go searching for it yourself. So yeah, amazing. Mmm, steal of the day. Big find right here. Yeah, not so much. Great in a pinch, but plan ahead and you'll save a lot more money. And... I think I'm going to show another pattern. This came to me as Happy Meal. Yay! Happy Meals. Yeah, I was very, very... I love Happy Meals. Happy Meals. Happy Meals. Uh, meals, not meals. Yeah. Happy guys. No. Um, so I love stitching with the sisterlies. Cheryl and Colleen. And sometimes their daughter, Cole, Colleen's daughter, Cole. I love them. They're really, really cute. They're fun to watch. They always have really great stitches. And they also make beautiful quilts. And... They also have dogs and cats in their video, so hey, I'm happy. And I entered for like one of their giveaways. Well, I won! Oh, yay. Thank you! So it came with this cute little card. I don't I love that color, those types of colors. Very earth. Very earthy. earthy. Um the sisters, they really love prim designs. So mm -hmm. very primitive, very earthy colors. And it's just it's a very pretty card. It's really and of course I just noticed this card, the design is by Teresa Kogut. Which, love you, Teresa. She also has a great floss tube that you should follow. She's a wonderful designer. Oh, she designed the card? Yeah, it's hers. So, Primitive Folk is called Forget Me Not by Teresa Kogan. Oh. And um, she is a prolific painter and designer and just all around wonderful person. So, you can check out her floss tube as well. But, yay, pretty little card. And then I had won something by one of my favorite designers. I love. Products by Roveras. And this one is this adorable. Look at the skeletons. Do you notice it's a pirate? See, like he's got like a peg leg and a parrot. But she's a mermaid. The little skeleton. Little oh, little. I didn't know she was a mermaid. She's a mermaid! And I love it! Yeah. I love it. I'm sold. I'm excited. Uh, actually, I'm just warning you. If you have any gifts for me, anything by Rivers, I would love. It's a touch. It's an Italian designer. And um, I will take them all because I love all of her work. And she just came out with a brand new B series. I want all of those patterns. Yeah. Anyway. Adorable. So, thank you, Cheryl and Colleen. Stitching with the sisterlies. I won. I never win anything. So it's even better. It's I'm, I'm just, oh, I think I had to work for you. I've worked I since I've Congress. gotten you. Yeah, I'm kind of like herding cats. Yeah, that's why I'm so good at it. Uh, another fun find. Jack's mom had like a whole bunch of stuff of his from back in the day and had found it and had given <laughs> yeah. it to him. And I just found this was funny. This tells you how old. It kind of dates us. Um... I noticed that these were uh, holiday stickers, like little embroidered stickers, but, uh, you know, for the 4th of July. But notice, it says American Revolution Bicentennial. <laughs> wow, so these stickers are 1976. That's funny. It was kind of back when, uh, <laughs> back in the 70s, we used to get a lot of the iron-on patches and things. And yeah. You'd, you'd throw them on your on your jeans or on your jean jacket or mm -hmm. whatever. And uh, when I opened up this box, there's a bunch of my old stuff. Uh, saw that in there, funny. and I just love it. But, yeah, I didn't even, I was like, oh, yeah, whatever. But then I noticed it said American Revolution Bicentennial. So, 1970s. My favorite part about iron. the packaging is it does not have a website on the back. Because it didn't exist then. Oh, that's true. Mm -hmm. And you got it from them Super X. That was where my dad worked. Which is where your dad worked, mm -hmm. at a pharmacy, which is no longer there. Uh, well, now it's a CVS. But, uh, yeah, I just I just really find that funny. And you're right. There is an address of the manufacturer, but there's no such things as, like, websites or anything else. And, wow, that's kind of freaky now. Yeah. It's vintage. I'm vintage. You are vintage. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, here's another pattern. I don't know if I'd shown you. Did I show this one? We showed that on a... No, 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 no. We didn't show that I one last time. 
I don't know. We'll just show it again. Know. What the heck? I love this so much. If I have shown it before, I just have to show it again because it's adorable. It's by the Prairie Schooler, and it's called Trick or Treat. And I really want to do these. I don't know. I do want to do the whole one, but I love these as ornaments. Look at each one of those little characters. Ornaments. Or see how they made them into just like a little pillow? Little other stitches. This is adorable. All of these could be separate little pieces. I have a lot to do on a Halloween tree. You you should help me with the Halloween tree with the perforated paper that we got from Cross Stitch Station. You yeah, could it's help awesome. me make some little Halloween ornaments. And I think tree. doing the little ones would be good for me because then I can complete them in a short period, yeah. shorter period of shorter. time. Shorter. Feels good. It's nice to get something done. Mm -hmm. So maybe you've seen it before, maybe you haven't, but I don't care. I love it. Trick or treat by the Prairie Schooler. Adorable. Is this, what's that cutie pie stitching so? Look at there. Oh, it's on the back of that. Yeah, okay, so Cutie Pie Stitch and Sew is, um, oh, that's where I got it. They're oh. a Cutie Pie Stitch and Sew from Etsy.com. Yeah, I just saw that. I didn't know what that which was. Which, I was going to say something else about them. He just likes to get me all distracted. That's what I do. That's what he does. And then I'm like, everywhere. Is that one from Cutie Pie? I don't know. Okay, we'll wait. We're just going to. We'll just, get there. Just, just slow down. I drink coffee. I drink coffee right now. You have a lot of coffee over there. Okay, so, oh, this is really cool. This is from Traditional Stitches, and it took me a little while to get it. Um, again, had I known about Cross Stitch Station, I could have just got some there because they even have up to 70 count fabric, but I had ordered online trying to find some fabric that I could do some, uh, like, pendants oh, or earrings. Looking, oh, it's really fine. It's really fine. This is... 56 count Zweigart I will not be doing white. anything on that. No, you will not. Nope. Look, you can't even, I'm putting this up here, you can't barely even see the fibers. So, however, um, it's called Kingston White. I'm going to take Jack's lovely magnifier. Which is in the other room. Yeah, which is in the other room, but I'm going to use that. Well, you should, because that's really because tiny. Because the only way I can see this. And so I got 56 count, and I got Wimple White. Uh, <laughs> I love that name. Yeah, Wimple great. White. Legacy, Don't squeeze the German. I think... Mr. Wimple. <laughs> uh, this is Legacy uh, Linen. And it's made by Access. The color is Wimple <laughs> White. You're so wrong. 50 count. So they're just two different kinds of white, but I really wanted to uh, try it. And so thank you, Traditional Stitches. <gasps> Ooh. Needlework Supply... I'm guessing that they, it's a full shop. Where's it out of? Look at that. Look at that wall of fibers. So, uh, uh, I think they're Alberta, Canada? Oh, that's good Canada. Well, I'm in. I'm game. Uh, Calgary. Calgary. Alberta, Canada. Mm -hmm. So, beautiful. So, thank you, Traditional Stitches. You can go to traditionalstitches.com and find that. Now, but what I will say about nice. stuff like this, even though... You can find local sources, and that's great, because we're going to do a lot through that other store yeah, that we found. it's good to support but your LNS. as we're going through all this, we're getting to meet a lot of people and a, and a lot of sources, so it's really good to, to, to reach out to other people. Um, so yes. I think that's kind of cool, too. And this is also supporting someone else's shop. Always support shops and designers wherever you can. <laughs> I heard the name Wimple. Love that. It's distracted easily. Speaking of one of our favorite shops, again, I might have shown this before. I don't care. I'm going to show it again because I love you, Top Knot Stitcher. We get our little needle minders from Abby and Jam over at oh, Top Knot. So and this was a meme from the internet. My cat, my hat, my pumpkin, and my bat. Yeah, it's just a funny little meme that was going around, and she made it into this cute little pattern. And I think I'm going to do this for our son. She does the needle minders? Yeah. Oh, I love the needle minders. Yeah, we love our needle minder. It's I have just, a three broomsticks needle it's minder. It's cute. It's just a cute pattern. So we're going to try it. That's cool. Yeah, I just love it. I What's just think it's um, Abby, Abigail, and Jam from Top Knot Stitcher on Etsy. Go there. And she also has a great uh, floss tube channel, so follow her as well. And I had promised several people I would get into doing rug hooking or rug punch, both. And I'm learning. Yeah. So I'm great at needle punch, and I know how to design for that, and really... Rug punch and needle punch are the same thing. Rug hooking, we work it from the opposite side, actually the front side of the fabric. So, stop it. I, I said the word hooking, and that just <laughs> sent him off. And I know that's what it did. See, it just makes uh, it behave. Yeah. Wimble. <laughs> <laughs> just, just a day. <laughs> oh, 
Too bad Tyler's not here. Oh, thank God our son's not here. They would be going for hours off of that. Anywho, uh, this I'm going to be using for rug hooking. Stop it. <laughs> uh, oh, this is, is a... Burlap? Well, not quite. So I like burlap. Uh, however, burlap as a fiber does not last forever. It breaks down really quickly. It's oh, still know. You can still use it. It's great to use and experiment with, but I like something that lasts a little bit longer. So this is a traditional linen, but it's a natural linen. Um, oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot softer than burlap. It's softer than, yeah, it's definitely softer. It's not as rough as burlap, but you can see the different hole count on there. Um, I'm trying to think if there was like what size. I got this from Whistle Stop Wool. Thank you, Whistle Stop Wool. I love that name. Uh, isn't that adorable? All these craft places have the coolest names. They really do. Like, like Wimble. Lisa B. the Pumpkin Lady. Uh, anyway, whistlestopwool.etsy.com. And uh, it just says, it's just natural primitive linen, 36 by thir uh, by 64. So it's it's a whole yard of linen that can do quite a bit. And with my new Oxford frame, be able to uh, use this. And I had also ordered oh. some, and I don't have their names right now, some hooks. I don't know if these came from, they might have come from them. I think this Heritage Rug Hook I might have gotten from them. Uh, so I got this little, a couple different types. This is a really fine rug hook. And this one's maybe a little bit larger. Oh, you can see on there. And I got these to start uh, playing with different fibers and DMC had sent different yard fibers, um, such as wool. If you want to make something that's more durable for an actual rug or maybe a seat, a chair cover, then you're going to want to use wool because it will last. Um, if, if it's not, if it's just going to be decorative or go up on the wall, you can use any fibers you want. But I had gotten some tapestry fibers, some tapestry wool from DMC, and I'm going to use it to make a pattern. How does, something punch, how, how does it work? Well, maybe we'll just show that in a different video. You punch the hook through, uh -huh. catch the fiber, and bring it up. Oh. You pull it up, and that literally is is it. It's just you have the fiber on the back, kind of like how you cross stitch. The needle goes in and goes out, but when the hook goes in, it catches because you have it with your other hand underneath. Oh, okay. It catches the whatever thread or fiber you use, and you just pull it back up through the tiny holes. You pull it up, and then that's it. And it just leaves little bumps on the top surface that form a pattern, kind of like pixels. And it looks the same when you're done as maybe rug punch or um, oh, needle punch. punch. Yeah. yeah. So, well, this is hooking and not the punching. Stop it. <laughs> Which I'm going to use this to try out. So, yay! You can also use monk's cloth for this, but I really I like oh, the look. Monk's cloth. I know. What is that? It doesn't go with hooking, but... Um, no, they're kind of opposite. Kind of opposite, but I really like the look of the natural, the primitive linen. I do like that. So, I wanted to, wanted to try that. Yet another experiment. I have lots to do, lots to experiment on. So, let's put in... Again, I might have shown some of these, but I love them. So I'm gonna show it again. Uh, Happy Halloween, this is a vintage Happy Halloween cross stitch pattern by the Witchy Stitcher. I like that. Meg is the Witchy Stitcher, she's on Etsy. Love her, love the Witchy Stitcher, look at that. This is very much done off of like a, a vintage um, postcard. That cat, I'm all about that cat. That's gotta happen. And I'm thinking something, okay, so something as simple as that cat, dashing over. Uh, I got this. This is a, a colored burlap, a roll of it from Walmart. But if you look, I mean, look at all those little easy holes on there to stitch through. Mm. So you could use that for a cross stitch or you could use that for rug punch or punch needle. Do they have other colors? Of could that? go right through. Well, rug punch. Uh, they do. They have a whole bunch of different colors of this, which is super cool. And a couple of different um, widths because I thought if you had something like this, you could take some cute little designs, like, okay, on here. See the little pumpkin down there? He's hilarious. Or even the cat might work, but that little pumpkin, I'm all about him too. You could just do some, uh, you could use the orange, or I could get black, and put the orange little pumpkin on there and make like a whole ribbon that would go down, and then you could put this on a large Halloween tree. Like, decorate it and drape this all around, but have stitched... Halloween designs on it. Hmm. Hmm. How cool would that be? Because this would be great to put a black cat face on all the way down. 
and you can even make like your own little borders but I was like this is kind of cool so I was going to show this for stash but that's that's why I wanted to show it again with those patterns these are really cool for Halloween pattern I think it'd be fun to have a pattern of like the ever ready cat the original ever ready batteries it's kind of like that cat but had the have the whole uh, sim the logo on there that would be yeah, really cool yeah you could do all sorts of things but I just I really like that um with the colored burlap well, I haven't seen that, that before but this was uh in the floral section at Walmart. They had a whole bunch of different colors of oh, burlap. Oh, floral so, section. Yeah, so I wanted to... This is a great thing to have in your stash. Another fun thing to experiment with. Ha -ha. And coming up, I had talked to Meg online, and I promised her uh, with our Stitchimations, I've done two so far... No, three. I've done three so far. We had done um, A Happy Halloween Cat by Doreen Jones, and... Another by Doreen Jones, which was a little reindeer for Christmas, and then we did by. I have to go look it up again. Um, our little Frenchie, our little French bulldog, which is so cute. Go and watch those videos, and I'll even link it at the end of this because they are animated cross stitch videos. So it takes you through the whole process, and you get to watch as I go along, and it's really adorable. And I promised Meg that I would do one of hers, and I think I'm gonna do this oh, one. Oh, just notice the gray in the background. Killing it. Oh yeah. Killing it. Now this one is done in black and gray. I saw online that she had done this in black and then the moon and this the little um oh it's a cemetery. A little cemetery behind it was in red. And I really like the punch of the black and the red. Although orange would be cool too. <gasps> Ooh or a spooky green. Like well, then you have to be a green. green. You like that? Well, that that parakeet green. Parakeet, or like maybe an acidy green. Oh, you know what? With this one? <gasps> a glow in the dark green. You know, it'd be cool with this. I was just thinking for. Glow in I, the I'm dark. a gamer, so I play a lot of tabletop games. We roll a lot of dice and stuff. This could be Brandon is our dungeon master, so he runs the the things. I could put a d20 down here for with a 20 on it. <gasps> so he's killing us. <laughs> so killing, killing it. Yeah, kill it because they'd be killing our characters. Yeah, but that'd be kind of fun. But I love that. But what if we did that glow in the dark? Well, the background glow in the dark? Well, you'd have to do all of that in stitching, although they might have glow in the dark fabric. But no, I'm talking about the little cemetery behind the the Reaper and the moon. Mm -hmm. And his face, his little skeletal face, can be done in glow in the dark thread. Oh. Yeah. Oh. That'd be cool. Maybe we'll do that for the video. I might change this up a little bit, Meg, and substitute a couple little colors. And again, whatever I do for this, you can go on the Lisa blog, the Lisa blog at pumpkinlady.com, and then you can find out like if I make any color substitutions or the fibers that I use. So when I do a stitchimation, all of the extra information about the designer, how to get the patterns, everything will be on there. So I really like that. I love how I subtle idea. the background is. That's it, what I like. It, is, but I just, I love, what do you mean the background? The background the, I mean, is the, white. No, no, the, the, the gray, the moon and Oh, stuff. yeah. The Those little, little elements, I didn't notice it at first. You don't. And then I'll I saw it, it and it really was really cool. Yep. I like that. Yep, the Witchy Stitcher Fiber Arts for the Strange and Unusual. I like that name, too. Strange, no, Strange, Unusual. Why am I Thus, strange? Because I want to be unusual. But that's why the Witchy Sticker, sti Sticker? Stitcher is awesome. Love yeah. it, Meg. That's so really this cool. will be the next Tichy Machine coming out. Stitchy and then Mason. I'm just going to show this too because I love this one too. This is just, this is adorable. And it's a very vintage style. Oh, it's by her and team. it's got the same little, oh, it's got this little teal pumpkin on it. Which I like the cute. teal. I know. This one is a vintage pumpkin witch by the Witchy Stitcher on Etsy. Look at little, the little creepy pumpkin down there. How hilarious is that little dude? That would be cool in one of those kind of stands. So pretty. The spinny things. Yep. And I love it. And yeah, I'm going to have to do the whole one. I'm not doing that in part. That is adorable. I like the stockings. I just, yeah, the little witchy stockings. It's perfect. So cool. Love you, witchy stitcher. I really do. Oh, I'm like so excited. I'm like moving the camera. All right. So those are those patterns. So I told you it was a lot for haul today. And oh, okay. I have something to discuss. Hmm. Not good, very happy. Good or bad? Um, it's kind of bad. Um, oh, no. but this is this is why I want to share this with you so that you know this as well. I was watching um, another great floss tube, Brenda and the Serial Stitcher. 
<laughs> They're adorable. Cereal yeah, stitcher. isn't that a great name? It's a great I love name. Brennan the Cereal Stitcher. Oh, I, I thought it was lovely. And she had shown a pack of linen that she had bought on Amazon, and the company was called Kato. And I was like, oh, those colors are so pretty. And it was really inexpensive. Huh. Now I know why. So the problem is that I got it. I had ordered two packs of it, two packs of this material. And again, the colors were really pretty. Look at the colors here. So we Just had like this color. pretty rose and a navy and a natural white. Oh, I like the other one. Yep. That and then one. this like a natural, the bay, the brown. And then um, a black, which I thought, oh, cool. It's like a faded black. Thing. Yeah. And so I thought these would be perfect. And the description said that they were like an even weave linen. And so like... It should just be perfect little boxes, you know, like when you take, see the fabric up close, because in cross stitch, everything is worked in a square. Like whether you go over one thread or you go over two threads, you form little X's that are in perfect square form. And that's what they said that this was perfect, uh-huh, for cross stitch and embroidery and all those good things. They lied. Um. They lied. I sent one of the packs back. Thank you, Amazon, for refunding my money. And the second pack I did not because when I got it out, I wanted to be all ready to stitch on it. So it was very stiff, so I wanted to get the sizing out, which is like a starch that they put in a lot of fibers. So I washed them. And so I didn't want to send them back because I'd already, like, I'd already washed them and well, we kind of changed it. Things, well, I'm going to try to, but here's the problem. These are not even. So I am working on, and I will... Should probably show this in the next video, uh, the Suffrage Act, um, which is a wonderful primitive stitch that I'm doing in conjunction with uh, stitching with the Sisterlies. They're sponsoring the Sal for the year because it celebrates um, Saw. Saw. Uh, the anniversary of not all women in America, a lot of women in America getting the right to vote. Um, but I think they even offer, like, they talk about different dates on there. That's cool. Thing that, that, that's you know, really different cool women, and yeah, can, and when they vote, is so you can change the dates on there. But I really wanted to do this on the blue, and so I started it on the blue. <sighs> you have to go up two threads and over one. So usually, whatever you do, you know, you would think to make like it, it should be balanced. Like an X would be up. To, if you use two threads up, you go over two threads and you make your little stitches. Because it's on linen, so you can't really see like it. Uh, you can really see the little holes of where to put your needle through. When you use linen, you count. Either you count up one thread and over one thread and put your stitch in, or up two and over two. Uh, no, it doesn't work like that. So in order to make it look correct and not squished and completely off kilter, I have to count every single stitch up two over one, up two over one. Not so bad when you're working on one little part, but try doing that if you have to like have space in between your stitches and you're trying to stitch up here trying to count. I literally have to use a calculator to figure out how many threads and like count it like five times before moving over and it's a pain. Now I am determined I am going to finish the Suffrage Act stitch using the piece that I had already started. Can I see this one? I, I don't even know. And here's the other thing. So the black and the blue. Obviously they had taken this and they had, you know, oh, wow. dyed these. And I've noticed Whatever the natural color they started with under this, which is probably like the natural white or whatever, maybe, uh, they dyed this. So these are a little bit softer. These two, this one and this, which has obviously been, you know, bleached before the processing, is so stiff. It's like medical gauze. Like, this is really rough. And, you know, part of us liking fibers, we like how they feel. Mm. Well, the holes on this one look a little more even. I don't like... The this feel one is terrible on these two. So let me see what that one is. I mean, it's the just, blue I can see is the holes awful. I'm going to look under here. Um, yep. Yeah, same thing, though. Um, you can see that. Just be, You can see the holes more easily because it's a lighter color. But again, to use this, I'm going to have to go up two and over one. So anything I stitch on these is going to be a pain in the tuchus. I don't like it. So I might... Oops. Like I said, since I've washed them, I didn't want to send them back because I'd already kind of adjusted it. This is soft and this is this. I might use this to back an back ornament. Something. 
Yeah, so I'm still going to use the fibers for something else. But like I said, I did want to send it back because I'd already washed it and done stuff to it. So, like, if I make some Valentine ornaments... The colors would, are pretty. This would be really pretty. The colors are gorgeous. I'll use it as a backing so I don't waste the material. Don't buy it. I am just saying, do not believe what they say. That linen pack, mm-mm, don't get it. If you want to use it for a backing cloth, great. But for your cross-stitching, don't do it. I was mad. I'm still mad. Now, I did get something else by Kato. I had ordered it at the same time. I had ordered the two packs of linen because I really wanted to do some stitches that were um, like cool a chalkboard thing. background. So I wanted black fabric. And so... This one, though, okay, this is okay. This is good. This almost feels like the perforated paper. It kind of feels like the perforated paper. That's nice. Uh, this, oh, it came in. Okay, this is cut into two pieces. I didn't think it was a two-piece cut. I don't know. It does not say, I'm trying to see if it said what kind of count was on here. Oh, no, two pieces, classic. Re 14, uh, 14 count. count. Um, so this is okay. So this one's by Kato, and this one is believable then. So I thought this was really pretty. This would be great for some chalkboard stitches. Yeah, I really like that. That's cool. Yeah. And now, notice you can see through. Can you see me? Yeah. Can you see through? Okay, so you have to be careful, though, using any kind of black or dark fabric when you go to finish these. Because a lot of people will just put, like, a piece of white sticky board behind it. Don't do that. Because if you put any kind of white sticky board or foam core, through. Uh, it's you're going to see the white shining through against your black fabric, and it's not going to give you as nice a finish. So if you do put a backing on here, um, and you want, I can link this too. I don't have it in front of me. I forgot to bring them out. I had bought on Amazon black foam core. So oh, that's yeah. great, and it's acid-free. And so you can cut that and put it behind here to, you know, wrap this around and finish your stitching on. And that's fantastic to use. And then it'll be nice and black coming through and you're not going to see a white shine in your finished piece. You don't want to see that. And I also bought some white large pieces of foam core and it comes in different sizes. I think I got 11 by 14 because I can cut them down or use them for bigger pieces, whatever. Um, I will put links to that on the blog as well. Those are great, really handy to just have in the background and the company shipped it really quickly yeah these are actually pretty cool but yeah these are nice it's 14 count and this is by Cato, the same people that made that linen so don't get the linen but get the 14 count black you think it's possible they just had a bad run on that linen possibly who knows well obviously so. quality control they didn't check oh. mm, but that was two separate packs i got from them oh. not happy oh. but this black is is fantastic mm. really nice to do yeah it um, is really neat some patterns on and I could even do some of the witchy stitcher patterns on here, some Halloween patterns. I don't know. Great for chalkboard patterns. I love that. So, hey, thumbs up, thumbs down. You win some, you lose some. That's okay. That, does this go with that? Yes, I'm just going to put it together. Okay. Probably won't go back in. Um, here's something else going on. So, oh, so many projects are in the works. Yeah, it's a lot. He knows. We are doing major changes on our website to a more just, not just least to be the pumpkin lady as in Halloween, but kind of crafting uh, happiness for your home all year round, 365 days a year. And so part of that, we'll be doing cross stitch designs and some of them will just be made up fun little designs from patterns that I have or just all the weird thoughts in my head and the lovely little characters. But some will be based off of a collection of antique postcards. Now, when I say antique postcards, uh, most of them are from before 1913, and I love them. I love the vintage cards. I think they make really beautiful art, and I've just gotten the program to start um, playing with turning them into cross-stitch patterns. Now, before I do this, I actually scan in a card. For example, this little card right here. I want you to see, can you see the little kittens? How sweet, how beautiful are the little kittens. So this one I've already scanned in. I've done it as a portrait and the designs themselves will be available if you want to use an image like this that has been edited, cleaned up, all nice and neat and pretty because I use Photoshop and I do all my own editing off of my own cards. I don't get these from anybody else. And then they will be scanned into the computer program and turned into cross-stitch patterns. Mm -hmm. Because that is lovely. 
that is really beautiful. And also, yeah, I have to tell you, I really love to read the back of these vintage cards. This one says, may you be as happy as the cat with her pet kitten is. Sincerely wish you, I sincerely wish of you fond cousin from Margie. It's so sweet. And this card is from 1912, says the postmark date. So not only will you be able to get these images themselves that you can use, because can you imagine just using like that to make your own cards, your own scrapbook designs, and then this will be available as um, a cross stitch pattern. And a little bit of tweaking, some of these will be made into punch needle and possibly rug patterns as well. I really wanted to show you that. And so I'm just going to show you a couple of things in my collection today. I have a really large collection. Most of mine are Halloween, but I'm getting all the other seasons. I just think that's a beautiful flower. That would be lovely to stitch, wouldn't it? And then another Easter card. Isn't she pretty? Let's see if I can get her. There she is. A lot of little chicks. And this little boy, and see now, you can see, oh, look at that lovely little postmark thing on there. I edit this out. I know how to do that. It takes a long time, but I edit it out. But I really wanted this card because I like the, how it says the Easter greetings, but I love the bunnies. Hmm. You see the little bunnies out there? They're adorable. And then this one with the trumpet. <laughs> He's so cute. And this is one of my favorite cards in my collection. This one says Happy New Year. How beautiful is she? Beautiful. I've already done some editing on her. Look at her little wooden dead shoes. Uh, so I have these and these will all be worked up. Um, that's a whole new category that's coming on there that uh, Jack can get to work with soon. And a lot of these, I will have free patterns still at pumpkinlady.com. We will be reopening an Etsy shop to be putting in a lot of these designs. It's been busy, but I'm also showing this today because I got a new one. Well, why and why is it important that you get the really old cards? Public domain. Mm -hmm. And that's it. We follow copyright laws. I know that there are people who just take any picture and they might scan it in and try to make it into a pattern. Or they sketch something out based off of everybody else's artwork. We don't. Mm -hmm. If you go to pumpkinlady.com... There's about a thousand different patterns on there. Over 900 just for pumpkin carving. A lot of those are getting translated into other art forms so that we can use them. Plus a whole bunch of new things for um, punch needle and more. Everything I do is original. It's all original art. Mm -hmm. You are sure to get unique patterns. When it comes to copyrights concerning these beautiful vintage cards, like mm -hmm. these postcards, currently, currently, the law is not the let me back up if you notice there's this no is logos. not there's no logos on here this is not a coca-cola card it doesn't matter how old it is trust me yeah, coca-cola still owns it okay mm -hmm. there's if you notice there's no um marks on here this is not uh, this is out of uh, date as far as copyright is concerned and so I can use this legally cards vintage postcards from 1923 and before and that's why you see a lot of these on artwork in different places especially for Halloween and Christmas because those companies are doing this they have postcards they get the art cleaned up make sure it's all nice and pretty and they put it on there uh, there is some talk in the public domain community that they might switch that to 1913 or possibly 1918 so I try to get them as old as I possibly can. It takes a long time to clean these up. It's a lot of mm -hmm. editing, a million hours worth of work. But these are so beautiful, I do want to bring them to you. Again, that's one well, of I my favorites. Thought, I thought it's, it's cool to bring that up because if people ask about know. that, they, then it's yep. absolutely... We do everything right. above board. And see, here's the thing. That is not my original artwork, but it is allowed in the public domain now. But... The edited version I make of this, the digital version, is my own personal copywritten artwork. So I can use this to make derivative works of. And so, yeah, it is good to know. We, we try really, with, really hard, with all our heart and soul, to follow everything the law allows. And I just got a brand new one in. This is from Christy Pratt. And she is flea market floozy. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Retro, vintage, and kish. Um, kish. So, uh, all kishies. Look at that. Flea market floozy. 
found her on Etsy and I love this card because I think the cats on this card would be wonderful for a primitive stitch. Look at this guy right there. Isn't he beautiful? That's beautiful. But you can see, see all the little marks and the little imperfections. Sometimes you can leave the imperfections. Sometimes those are pretty. I love the little birds. Adorable, but just the cats themselves and their faces. Um, sometimes you might want to leave the marks. They can add to the design. Mm -hmm. Other times, not so much. So this one has some, you know, some marks on it. I will work on it and that's okay. I can edit that. And this one is from 1909. So 1909, but I had to buy this card. It was a little bit more expensive, but that little cat in the corner, all about it. That's all so about cool. it. That is just, that's a beautiful card. And it's an overall, it's still in excellent shape. It's mm -hmm. really an excellent shape. And I just think that would make the most beautiful little primitive cat pattern. Yep. A lot of busy work ahead. On we go. Jack hasn't seen this. Well, I guess you haven't seen a lot of these. So... Before we discovered, thank you Terry from Cross Stitch Station, the wonders of perforated paper, we were working with um, just uh, Ada cross stitch fabric that we had dyed mm -hmm. for Jack's uh, packet as uh, uh, avocado cross stitch piece. And so I had ordered something because he didn't like all the extra fabric from the hoop. It was getting in his way of trying to stitch. He kept poking it. He kept poking it. So I got him this little, it's not, it, it's not a Q-snap brand, but it's like a Q-snap. So this is a little plastic snap frame. I had ordered these off of Amazon and they're really inexpensive. So how about this? Why don't you open up one of these? Go for it. And so I got this as a surprise for him. Surprise. Hey. So I don't know if he'll be using it. But I do a ton of stitching, so guess what? I can use it. Yeah, it'll go to, it'll go to use. And right? here, I have scissors. We're just going to open these up really quickly. Yeah. Uh, it will go to good use. There's a lot of stuff that I have had to put on hold because of waiting to do this video. Now I can break into everything. Oh, that didn't actually... I thought I cut the package open. It only cut part of there's, it. It's a little, there's a little piece of tape right there. On yes, side. I had cut the tape. Hmm. But... We can show you really quickly how easy it is to put these together as soon as you actually get it out of the package. I can't do it. <laughs> See, he's, he's struggling too. I'm not struggling. It's quirky. <laughs> Are you okay over there? <laughs> my scissors. These used to be my good fabric scissors. They're not so much anymore. I need. I do not cut pair. anything without asking first. Yeah, after destroying like fifty thousand pairs, he has learned. You know, kind of. But hey, at least I'm good about it. Yeah, you try. These just have been. You know, I've used them for a long time, and so I need to get a new pair. Oh, these are tiny. Yeah, these are meant to be really little because you are working on a tiny stitch, right? So these are so simple, like. Here's the plastic piece, and you just push it together. Oh, look, it's almost done. Well, that's pretty stiff. Oh, oh, they're, they're keyed, kind of. Yeah. Okay. So, there you go. That is how difficult the whole process was. It's done. Right there. And then you have the little snap pieces. Oh, okay, you know what? This is easier than a key snap, although it might come loose later. So, these little pieces, you put your fiber on, and then you just snap it over top and it holds your fabric on but That's super cool. yeah it's really really nice but he was complaining because of extra fabric around so i ordered this one from tankard crafts okay hold on i have these are different they come in different sizes i think <gasps> Ooh, this is for it's like a bonnet wait this is oh, weird. wrong size hold on hold on we'll get to the tankard crafts one this one's from Handmade by Tiffany Hayes. Is it worth it? Okay. Where's this one? I'll, I'll get the link for this and put this in the blog. I love this. Look, it's a magical grime oh, guard. Oh, that's cool. There's stars and moons. And so you take your little grime guard and you just put it around. And I got it. This is a six inch plastic frame. So she made me a six inch grime guard. And so this goes around. So your extra fabric gets goes in, in here, gets tucked in there. And so your hands don't get your fabric all mixed up, messed up. It's a nice little protector. So you can put it in there and it, it really keeps cool. it all nice. So this one, it even has like a little, little bat. I love this. So this one was for me. 
And I want to say this one was for you. Oh. And I got a different one. Um, I have a larger Q-Snap that's somewhere else in my other room. And I got this for me. This was the one by Tankard Crafts. Look at the black cats. <laughs> I like the little bow It's on this. so cute. The little ribbon on this and the back is cute. Yes, this one's by Pudgy Corgi Crochet, I think. Let's see if that's the one. Yes. This is one I got for Jack. Pudgy oh. by Pudgy Corgi Crochet and this is from Etsy. It's very I like witchy things. And, and a little witchy one too. So you can kind of see. Let me see if we can get there. Yeah, I don't there's know if I got cauldron. you the witchy one or the moon and bat one, but it doesn't matter. Witchy hats, there's a cauldron. We got some Halloween themed ones. And a skeletal hand. They're so cute. And then so you just take it like this. Well, I guess you take this out. No, that goes over top of it. Yeah, this, it goes it? over top of it. And then you just take it and it just goes around. And then that would protect the edges of your fabric when you're stitching. So and it looks cool. Dirty hands don't mess up your stuff, and then it keeps the extra fiber out of the way. Hence the name Grand Guard. Grand Guard. That's really cool. But they're all handmade, and I love them. So there you go. How cute. All the little Halloween This one's neat. Ones. I love it. I love the color. This blue is teal. That's really pretty. Rocking it. Mm-hmm. Could you wear it like a scarf? Put it down like that's not as much fun. Well, I kind of like that version. <laughs> there. It's like... You can rock it. Mm -hmm. It matches what you're wearing. Oh! <gasps> oh! <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah. yeah! 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 Whoa! And <laughs> get some RuPaul play in here. Clown collar. Kitty girl. <laughs> it's a clown collar. Kitty girl. <laughs> Kitty girl. <laughs> You're just rocking that, aren't you? I love it. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's... I'm very secure. <laughs> <laughs> That's a look. Yeah, that was awesome. Hot. Girl. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm going to read trust, and I just wanted to show a couple more pieces that I got from Walmart. So, this is pretty cool. Walmart has become a little bit more... Woke. <laughs> I love the Looking name of that. Looking for stuff. Oh, this is by Jilly Bean. Oh, um... Jilly Bean. While I'm saying this, Mr. Clown Collar, Cat Collar, there are two wooden paddle boards over there. Could you grab this for me? I meant to bring them over. Yeah, we're not going there. Okay. Um, so I had gone to Walmart, and Walmart I mean, has been... No, oh, I see. Over, there you go. Walmart has been getting a lot of decorative kinds of boards that are fantastic to mount cross stitches and punch needles or mug designs on. Really, really beautiful. A very popular thing to put punch needle designs on as a backing are horn books. Horn books were generally wooden paddles back in the day. They would have looked a lot like this, but they honestly had a very thin sheet of horn over top of it. And the thin sheet would let you write on it and practice letters. They would put, it acted like a tracing paper. So they could put letters underneath, put the piece of horn down, and trace over top of it. Oh, and gotcha. that would act, it's called a horn book. And then they could, kids could practice their letters on this in school. Now we use these as decorative pieces. So this is a cutting board, basically. But traditionally called a horn book. And I found these at Walmart for like five or six dollars. I think they're just fine. And uh, yeah, but they call them resin pour boards. Yeah, we're not using it for resin. Um, we are using this. Um, we can dye it, paint it, stain it, and put our fiber art pieces on it. So yay! I'm that's sorry. that's just from Walmart. What I will say is if, if if you're like me, I like I like taking like a really high grit sandpaper, like a 220 or something, yeah. and just go over that really quick, and this will feel super smooth. It's fairly smooth now. Yeah, it is. But so I it would, put, would just brush over if it. If you are going to stain or do something to it, mm -hmm. I would do just a little fine, quick, like uh, one minute, the whole piece would be done. Yeah. Uh, they also have, now, there's a lot larger pieces than this one I'm showing you, but these for mounting, for media, I mean, you, you can make it to put like a photo or quotes in, but you can put right there, just put that right in, hang it on your wall. It'd be great for a piece. Oh, you know and, what you can do with that? Yeah. This is, you could actually do, if you could do like a magnetic mount, you could you could change this out periodically. Yes, so if you put magnets on the back of your work, you just, thunk, thunk, just thunk. stick it out. Holiday really season, cool. very, very fast switches. And then they have it in white. And then they have like large boards in pine or white, a lot bigger than this, a lot smaller than this. But this is fantastic for mounting your work. And you could even take this little hanger off the back. You could use it to hang up. Take that off and you could mount your work on the back side as well. So, fantastic, and found those 
really inexpensively at Walmart, and I found these at Walmart. These are kind of cool. This is jute. Uh, it's jute. basically like a burlap bag. But if you see this bag, you could stitch right here. Use it to stitch a very simple design on and make a beautiful gift bag as part of the gift. Are those three bags or one folded There's up? three. There's oh. three bags. Oh, and it's only that's like cool. maybe two to three dollars in there. It's three different bags. Now, if you were to stitch, what would you, how many threads would you stitch with that? Um, that's this, be a lot yeah, this is not even 14 count. This is probably like an eight count fabric. Honestly, you could probably use all six threads, all six strands of your thread, but mm -hmm. this is great as a gift bag for the end of the year. You get these now and put stitches on them and use them for birthdays or Christmas and. That'd be cool. That's really it's a couple bucks, and there's it comes with three of them. So, very cool, Walmart. Yay! Coming to the dark side of stitching. And then I have, last but not least, for hallelujah, oh, this man. is my very special happy bag. She likes white bags. I, white bags. Yeah. Uh huh. This is from Not Forgotten Farm. Oh, yeah, they have donkeys. Lori Brecklin. Do you want to see the donkeys? Here, let's do a video real quick. You can see a real quick clip of the donkeys. <laughs> Pinocchio and Daisy. What? The donkey names. <laughs> okay. I'm like, Not I love this team. because they have their winter coats. Look at the fuzz. Look at the fur. They didn't have it that thick when we were here last time. Look at this thick fur. Here, hold on. Let me come around this way. I want to see this one. I want to well, let me have a carrot. Okay. I give you a carrot. Your fur is, you're sick, not us. Okay. <gasps> I gave him a couple. No, no, wait. There you go. <laughs> you gotta bite it. That's too much. That's too much. Yes, we don't want to choke our friends. <laughs> okay, come here. <gasps> Look at those teeth. There you go. Don't think I want to. Well, that, that, yeah, I know. <laughs> I love donkeys. I'm so excited. Their noses are so velvety. For y'all, you're a piggy. Let her have some. Wait, thank you. Yeah, I was like, please, just a carrot. Yeah. Just a carrot. Yeah, you might need your fingers. Okay, what happens? What if we do that? I was trying for a lady in the trap moment. It didn't work. You're still chewing. Okay, I'm so sorry. You're more of a lady. Your mouth is full. Look at the fuzz, man. <laughs> oh my gosh, Not Forgotten Farm is amazing. There we go. We'll come back again and do a video with you again and bring you more treats. Because mm -hmm. donkeys and treats. I'm in love. Look at the two faces. This is. So there you go. Love the donkeys. And there's always like little dogs that visit too, but her shop is to die for. And I had gone in there shopping uh, the last time I visited. And if you come on a Saturday, which is usually, she's usually open, check her Facebook site to see, just to make sure she's not gone for a show or something. But you can come in and stitch there for the day too, or work on any project you want to, which is really nice. It's a beautiful store. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's it is lovely. awesome. And has about everything you could ever hope for, for punch needle and rug hooking supplies and cross stitch. Sells a lot of patterns by Lori, as well as other designers too. And when I was there, I wanted to get some of these Oxford punches, which is great for the other materials I got today. So I got like a, basically I think I got a size 10 and a size 14. Uh, the 14 is a smaller for a little bit finer. Oh, it feeds through it? Yeah, so this is for rug punch. You do it just like punch needle, but it feeds through it. So you can, this is interesting. There's the fiber, there's the yarn that would go in. Uh, you don't need a special, um, needle hook to go in like you would with an ultra punch tool if you take your little thread and do you see there's like a little where's there's the channel right there there's a channel oh you just pop it through yeah so you just start pulling it you kind of just put your yarn right there in the channel and you can just drag it oh there we go i dragged it in that's it it just pulls right in okay 
Well, that's and cool. It's that's there. Easy. That's and easy. then with finer um, yarns, you use this little hook, and you put your yarn, the tail end of the yarn through that, and it just helps keep any smaller, thinner yarns from falling out. And that's it. And then you just punch through. And I got two different sizes to try. These are by Amy Oxford at Oxford, um, amyoxford.com. You can get them from, but Lori carries them in her store. And they're wonderful and really nice, beautifully uh, handmade they're clever. tools. So I love that, yeah, being able to thread one of these it really is that's, simple that's and clever. Really you don't need extra tools. So I got two of those. Um, this, these, I've shown this before. I got extra patterns. Um, of course, I had to get the B pattern. Now, this was for a punch needle pocket. You could put little, like, dried flowers or whatever in there, but I love the little beads. It's called Blessed. Beautiful bee pattern by Lori. I think this is by Lori. Yeah, that one's by Lori. And this one is by Cinnamon Creek Folk Art, and I fell in love with this little design because she actually had a couple of these made, and you could buy the finished rabbit in the store. But look, you can make a very primitive bunny. Is that a felt sculpture? Yeah. Cute. No, I actually um, oh, I put it up high. I I have. She sells the fur that goes with it. It's a very like a primitive type of like mm. fur, and she carries that as well in white and a natural brown. And so I want to make that adorable little stuffed rabbit. It's so cute. And this is going to be, I think, my first rug hooking. <laughs> I knew he was going to do it. And this is called Boo Kitty. Uh, this is, the pattern is by Lori. Now, I don't know if I'm going to do it with this little pumpkin on him. Maybe. I don't know. I just love the black cat. I keep coming back to this pattern so many times, so I got it. And I love the idea of making this maybe my first rug hook design. Isn't that adorable? Might be punch. But I'll probably use wools for it. I might use the DMC wools I got the other day. Maybe I'll do some of that. But I love it! And this one's called Boo Kitty. And Lori has this at her shop. I think you can buy it online in her Etsy store as well. And then this is a new thing I want to get into. And you could do this too. Uncounted cross stitch. There is an uncounted cross stitch group on Facebook. And so the idea is, is we all do counted cross stitch. I am in love with this little sheep and the witch hat. Well, you just kind of eyeball it? You eyeball it. Yep, this is called the Old Salem Wool Company, 1863. And it's adorable little sheep, but it is uncounted cross stitch. If you look, can you see the stitches are all kind of wobbly? They kind of wiggle back and forth? That's because you just stitch it however you want to stitch it. You don't count. So, if you do this on like an Ada or something that has very formal holes, it's kind of hard to do an uncounted cross stitch on that because your brain wants to make the stitches line up really exact. Lori has Osnaberg fabric and I think she just got a new order in. It comes in all different beautiful shades and this fabric if I look at it up close it actually isn't even weave so you could do a counted cross stitch but it's very very fine so it's great for uncounted cross stitch. Six dollars for a big piece of this and I love it because of the modeling it's a very modeled fabric, and you can kind of look around on it because the backs are different than the front. It almost looks like a suede from a distance. It kind of looks like a suede. It is a... Osnaberg is very, very fine. So if I tried to make this a counted cross stitch, I would really have to use a magnifier. I'd go crazy. But for uncounted cross stitch, or as a backer for, your fa for any kind of stitch, they are so beautiful. And you make the stitches any size you want to fill in, like, the sheep form. You can put your stitches in however you want it to go. I love it. I'm going to have to put some uncounted cross stitch patterns on the website soon or in the Etsy shop because that's just too fun. So what is the pattern? Just like the outside? I, I, it's kind it of like just the outside line. You fill it yeah. in. But you can fill in different sizes. So, like, let's say you're trying to make the wrinkle of wool around a sheep's neck. Maybe you want to do that a thicker X's, wider X's, and finer on, say, the haunch. So then that way it gives you dimension in a piece without being counted. And it kind of gives a little bit more primitive, a little bit more natural look to it. So I love it. Um, I got more of a gray. I got the black. The teals were to die for, the, sm the soft blue-green. And I'm waiting for her because she's getting more in. I'd seen a whole bunch at Christmas. And I didn't know what to do with it. Now I know what to do with it. 
and then the naturals. So I got four colors while I was there. You know, you're going on these websites and paying like $30 for a piece of fabric. $6 for the Osnaberg. I love it. That's a pretty good size piece of fabric right there. Look, and I, and look I at will that say, opened up. Look at the modeling on that. If you go to her store, you'll you'll go <sighs> back because it is it's phenomenal. Again and again, the store is phenomenal. Uh, yeah, I just can't say enough about it. It's in Amherst, Virginia. She does have a website, and you can go on her Etsy shop. But I love showing the Osnaberg because I love this the dyed pieces. And the ladies who are stitching there are hysterical. Oh yeah, there's They're a group really of stitchers funny. that are just so funny. They're really sweet people. And I'm trying to see if I can get the angle right. I'm just going to cover up Jack. So you can see the different modeling in the fabric. That's what caught my eye. I really like the dyed differences. And so every single piece, you have to kind of go through it all because it's all different. But I loved all I the like modeling. One. Gosh, I knew you would. But this would be great. And I think you would be good for uncounted cross stitch because even with if you have trouble eyesight, you're not trying to make perfect little stitches. The point is not to. So... That's really good to do on fine fabrics that might be hard otherwise to see for counted cross stitch, but for uncounted, it's perfect. So this is very cool. And I mean, what was that? So $24 for all of these pieces compared to like more than that for just one usually? Yeah. Pretty fantastic. And I have to go back just because I need to get some different types of these. I need to get other colors because these are beautiful Osnaberg fabric from Not Forgotten Farm. And so... I'm exhausted. Is it? I am. For the most part, yeah. For a second. Hallelujah. And of course, this didn't even include the third hallelujah. You know, basically the third, like part 2A from Cross Stitch Station. Uh, that was almost a hallelujah because we got a whole bunch of stuff from them too. We've had a lot coming in lately. So now I, we have a lot of projects to work on. That's always the case. Your cat. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. He's just like rocking that look. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Go, kitty girl. Should be that walk. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Sissy that walk. Sissy that walk. Sorry, Roo. Sissy that walk. Yeah, our cat's Luna Roo. One of them because Luna is a pretty name and Roo for RuPaul because she's I'm actually sashays. an 80s hair metal fan. I know. But, we but love when RuPaul. I heard RuPaul's music, I just, I love it. It's fantastic. It's, it's just so happy. Because we're so happy. And all of this stuff is so happy. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to try to get all the details out on the blog this coming week. And it's just a lot. And this doesn't even actually include. We might have some more to show. But we're going to do that for a separate video as part of, like, a little whip parade. Whip it good. Mm -hmm. So a whole bunch of little works in progress whip. And, uh, yeah, that'll be coming up soon. Gosh. Whips and paddles. Videos. Whips in progress. Stuff. <laughs> We're PG. Yeah. yeah, at least not here. Um, so, until next time, please take time. Please, we have an entire herd of stitching buddies in their room. Yeah, they eat better than we do, and they eat way more than we do, and we need to be able to take care of them. So, uh, please like our videos. Please subscribe, and most importantly, share. You can also share things with me. Um, tag me on Instagram, Lisa Be the Pumpkin Lady, as well as you can visit uh, pumpkinlady.com. Stay tuned for more information about the upcoming Etsy store, and go on Facebook to Pumpkin Lady and share pictures with me of your stitching buddies and your projects and what you'd like to see next. And any single question that you have, you can put on there, or you can put it in the comments down below. And Fun fact. Can... <gasps> PumpkinLadyWebsite.com is actually going to be 22 years old this year. How crazy is that, right? You're 22 really years dating old. us. Wow. No, I'm dating you. It's barely older than our kid. Yeah. No, younger than younger our kid. Younger than our kid. Yeah. Wow. So I just thought that was kind of cool because it's a fun thing to say. You don't see that many websites that have been around that no, long. No, it's been around. We've been around a long time. Yeah. But we would really like to be able to keep affording to, uh, you know, feed our stitching buddies so that they don't end up eating us. And, um... Yeah, we have them all because they're rescues and a lot of medical bills. So that's fun. But we love them, and we love what we do, and it's a lot of fun, and we love getting to share it with you. So please, please, if you like our videos, like, comment. That's really, really important to like the videos and to make comments on the videos. Watch them. Share them so that we can keep growing our channel and uh, keep bringing a lot of pumpkin goodness, stitchy goodness, 
stitching buddy goodness to you. So until next time, bye pumpkins. Later. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Bye.